Hey guys, this is Landon with the Command Valley, bringing you another Commander deck tech. I'd like to give a huge shout out to GameGrid for sponsoring this channel and this episode, and if you want to check out their new and improved store and support the channel while doing so, you can go through the link in the description below. We will have a copy and pasteable deck list right in the description that you can put into their website and purchase the singles from this deck there. If you're interested in supporting the channel directly, you can head on over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash commandvalley to sign up today. So for this week's deck tech, I am super excited to be introducing you to the Witherbloom College. I have brewed up a super cool deck for Dina the Soul Steeper, and I think to steep is maybe synonymous with brewing, so that's kind of cool. A little bit of wordplay there. And the Witherbloom College is all about gaining life, death, regrowth, all of the good stuff that green and black is known for. So if you're unfamiliar with Dina, she costs a green and a black, she's a legendary creature dryad druid, and she reads whenever you gain life, each opponent loses a life. She also has an activated ability where you can pay one generic mana to sacrifice another creature and Dina is going to get plus X plus O until the end of the turn where X is the sacrificed creature's power. So she has a lot of value stapled onto her that isn't super apparent on the first look. Having a sack outlet in the command zone even though it does cost one generic mana is very nice to have. And her ability of every time we gain life, we ping our opponents for one is also a little bit stronger than it looks. I have seen a bunch of lists online that have a bunch of ways of gaining a bunch of life all at once, but I don't think that works super well with her because she doesn't really care about how much life you gain per trigger or per iteration. She just cares that you gain life. So my deck is filled with lots of little ways of gaining life here and there and making pest tokens because pests are the mascot of the wither bloom. And I've tried to use a bunch of cards from the standard set, so maybe this deck is almost just a little bit of, of a flavorful deck. I don't know, I was just having a ton of fun brewing this deck up. So like I said, this deck is trying to gain a bunch of life incrementally throughout the game, but is it is also just an Aristocrats Golgari deck, Witherbloom deck, I don't know which one to say nowadays. So there are lots of ways in this deck that we have of sacrificing creatures for value and to punish our opponents with that. So I've separated this deck into a couple of different categories, starting off with the mana ramp, and I'm using mostly creatures for the mana ramp because these creatures are going to be fodder or fuel for our aristocrat spells. So we've got an Elvish Mystic, a Lanoir Elves, Arbor Elf, Elves of Deep Shadow, Findhorn Elves, Farhaven Elf, and Wood Elves can get us lands when they come into play. We've also got Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, and Golgari Signet. Just really good mana ramp. We can get it on turn one, turn two. Our commander is super low costed, and I'm not entirely sure if she's going to be a huge target, but we want to make sure that we have enough mana to recast her later on if that's the case. I'm also playing an Accomplished Alchemist, which is a really expensive mana dork, but has a super high ceiling of being able to tap for as much mana as we've gained life in a turn, so that's super cool. I'm also playing Secure Tri Builder, which isn't quite a mana dork, but it sacrifices itself to go and find a land. We're playing a bunch of cards in this deck that care about creatures dying as per a normal Aristocrats deck, so that'll be nice to trigger it. And I'm also playing a Haro. I like Haro because of the color fixing in addition to the mana acceleration. So the next category I've labeled as the life gainers and drainers. These are the cards that we have of gaining life whenever something happens and making our opponents lose life. And it's nice to have that extra redundancy so we're not relying so much on our commander to drain our opponents. We have Essence Warden and Death Greeter, which are basically the same cards but in opposite directions. Whenever a creature comes into play, Essence Warden is going to give us a life. And whenever Death Greeter sees a creature die, we are going to gain a life. We're also playing Jotty Offshoot, which is a defender that gains us a life on landfall. We've also got a bunch of other creatures that care about creatures dying with Blood Artist, Zulaport Cutthroat, Falconrath Noble, Sir Conrad the Grim, and Poison Tip Archer. These are all going to trigger at some point in time when a creature dies to drain each of our opponents or drain one of our opponents and let us gain life, which will then trigger our commander to make each of our opponents lose a life. So there's a bunch of synergy there. We're also playing some extra redundant effects to our commander, such as Marauding Blight Priest and Vito Thorn of the Dusk Rose. Now at this point in the video, I would like to just kind of pause on Vito. If you're familiar with Vito at all, you will know that he has some combo potential with the enchantment Exquisite Blood. Now I've omitted Exquisite Blood from this list, even though it also combos with our commander, simply because it's an extremely expensive card right now. And I know not everybody wants to spend that type of money on one card. And also at the same time, doesn't necessarily just to have a one trick pony deck where you get Dina, you get Exquisite Blood and you just win the game. So I've kept that out of the deck for that reason reason 
but I just want you to be aware that if you were looking to upgrade Dina and give her some combo potential, that Exquisite Blood is the card that you're looking for. We've also got some more drainers on permanent types other than creatures with Bontu's Monument, which is going to give a reduction to all of our black creature spells for their mana cost. And then whenever we cast a creature spell, each opponent is going to lose life and we are going to gain a life. We've also got Bastion of Remembrance, which when it ETBs gives us a white human creature token, and whenever a creature we control dies, each opponent is going to lose a life and we are going to gain a life. So it's essentially Zulu Port Cutthroat on an enchantment that comes in with a friend. And now the card I am most excited about from this category to tell you about is a super weird and old enchantment called Roots of Life. It costs one a green and a green, and when it enters a battlefield, you have to name islands or swamps. Whenever a land of the chosen type that an opponent controls becomes tapped, we are going to gain a life. So with this in play with our commander, whenever our opponents tap an island or a swamp, depending on which one we chose, depending on whatever our opponents are playing, they're going to lose a life essentially for doing so. I mean, we're going to gain a life, but then Dina will make them lose a life. So I really feel like that's a really strong spell in this deck only. Now, the next category in this deck is quite a small category, but it is the cards that we have in the deck that are life gain payoffs specifically. There are some other cards in the deck that care a little bit about life gain, but these ones are specifically life gain. So we've got Vain Witch Coven. It is a new card from Strixhaven, as is actually almost all the other cards in this category. And whenever we gain life, we can pay one black mana. And if we do, we can return target creature card from our graveyard to our hand. This is really good in the deck. This deck is primarily creatures and being able to turn each iteration of life gain into recurring cards from our graveyard is super powerful. And being three mana for a three three with menace, it's got a really good body to boot. We then have Ezerroot Channeler, which is a new card from the Witherbloom pre-constructed deck. And it says creature spells you cast cost X less to cast where X is the amount of life you gained this turn. You can also tap it to gain two life. So six mana is a little expensive but we are playing some pretty high costed creatures in the deck and we are playing a lot of creatures in that three to four range and the fact that this doesn't just give us mana but it makes them all cost less means that we can actually play more spells in the turn than if this were to just you know generate us a bunch of mana so i really like the cost reduction on this as opposed to it just tapping for a bunch of mana we're also playing another card from the pre-con sprout back trudge it is a nine mana fungus beast that is a nine seven and it costs x less to cast or x the amount of life you gained this turn it has trample and at the beginning of our end step if we gain life this turn we can cast it from our graveyard now this is just super powerful with the aristocrat strategy that we're going for we've got so many ways of sacrificing creatures for value and if we have a couple of our pingers in play that ping our opponents when creatures die it's not unlikely that we can cast this for two three mana sacrifice it and rip it back from the graveyard i mean we could be playing this you know sacrificing this twice in a turn and that's just a super powerful card and it hits for a lot if we need it to so really happy to have this card in the deck and then we are playing a card all the way back from Eldrain with Witch of the Moors. It has Death Touch and it's a 4-4. In the beginning of our end step, if we gained life this turn, each opponent is going to have to sacrifice a creature and we return up to one target creature card from our graveyard to our hand. This is kind of along the lines of the Vain Witch Coven, turning life gain into cards from our graveyard back into our hand, having the added benefit of making each of our opponents sacrifice one of their creatures. It's so easy for us to gain life in this deck. I do not see a game where this is not going to trigger every turn that we have it. The next category is my recursion category. These are some other cards that I have in the deck to grip more things from our graveyard back into our hand. We've got an Eternal Witness and a Battle Get Recovery and a Regrowth, each of which can get cards from our graveyard back to our hand, and a Victimize, which at the cost of one creature can let two creatures come back from our graveyard into play. Now you're going to see some of those creatures that we're going to want to be reanimating with the spell in a little bit. We've also got a Deadly Brew, which makes everybody in play sacrifice a creature, and then we can return another permanent from our graveyard to our hand, but that's got a little bit more utility on it, so yeah. Now the next category, I'd like to talk about the sack outlets. So we're not playing quite as many as I would like, but that's just our commander does have a sack outlet on it. And a lot of the other sack outlets are actually going up in price. And I was trying to keep this deck relatively budget. So we've got a Viscera Seer, a Carrion Feeder, a Woe Strider, and a Witch's Oven. So all of these are going to let us sacrifice creatures at instant speed 
for no cost other than the witch's oven, which is super nice to have. And then it wouldn't be a aristocrat deck without some token makers. So we've got a bunch of ways of making a tremendous amount of tokens when our creatures die with Blight Mound, which whenever a non-token creature we control dies, we're going to make a 1-1 black and green pest creature token with when this creature dies, we are going to gain a life. We've also got Pawn of Ulamog, which is going to make us an Eldrazi token that we can sacrifice for mana every single time one of our non-token creatures dies. We've also got Avenger of Zendikar, which when it ETBs is going to make us a plant token for each land we control and a Zony Thousand Eyed, which is going to give us an insect for each creature in our graveyard. And these are the creatures that we're going to want to be reanimating with that Victimize. These are going to give us a tremendous amount of tokens and that is just the perfect fuel for some of the other effects in the deck. We've also got a super cool new spell from the standard set with Tend the Pests. Tend the Pests lets us sacrifice a creature as an additional cost and we're going to make X black and green pest creature tokens where X is the sacrificed creature's power. And then we've got a super cool removal spell that also makes us a bunch of tokens with Pest Infestation. It is XX in a green for a sorcery that lets us destroy up to X target artifacts and or enchantments and we're going to create twice X 1-1 green and black pest creature tokens. And of course, pests have that ability whenever they die, we are going to gain a life. So already that's a super powerful spell, but the fact that those pests, you know, trigger our commander when they die, and we've got so many ways of killing our own creatures, it's so good in the deck. All right, the next category I'd like to go over is all of the ways that we have of drawing cards in the deck. So we've talked a lot about the spells that we're going to be deploying from our hand and our hand is going to be depleted super quickly. So we have plenty of ways of keeping it full. We've got Grim Harvest Specs, Midnight Reaper and Moldervine Reclamation, each of which are going to let us draw cards whenever a creature we control dies. With Grim Harvest Specs and Midnight Reaper, it can't be a non-token creature, but with 35 creatures in the deck, it, we're gonna have enough to trigger this consistently. We've also got a Skull Clamp, which is going to let us pay one mana to clamp one of our creatures and draw two cards. The creature has to die, but we were playing so many weak creatures and we've got so many ways of making 1-1 one, one tokens that, yeah, it's basically one mana, draw two cards. Then we're playing Fecundity, which can be an upside for our opponents, but I think we're gonna be able to take advantage of this more than our opponents. Whenever a creature dies, its controller is going to draw a card. We are then playing Bolas' Citadel, which lets us look at and play the top card of our library, and if we do play the card from the top of our library, we get to pay life rather than pay its mana cost. Since we are going to be gaining a ton of life, Bolasa Citadel can allow us to go super deep into our deck. It then has an activated ability that lets us sacrifice 10 non-land permanents and each opponent is going to lose 10 life. Now I have played a tremendous amount of Bolasa Citadel. I play it in my Kess Storm Spellslinger deck and I've never once been able to activate that uh, sacrifice 10 permanents and I think we have a chance of doing it in this deck and I think that's probably pretty good here. We're then playing Ambition's Cost and Read the Bones. Ambition's Cost lets us draw three cards at the expense of three life and Read the Bones lets us scry two, draw two, and lose two life. We are also playing two tutors, the first of which is Rushed Rebirth, which is a new card from the standard set. At instant speed, we can choose target creature, and when that creature dies this turn, we can search our library for a creature card with lesser mana value, and we can put it directly into play. Now, I am really high on this spell. I think it is so, so, so powerful. And I think the most important role that it plays in this deck is to make sure we can consistently find our Midnight Reaper or our Grim Haru Specs or our Beast Whisperer, which lets us draw a card every time we cast a spell, which we are definitely including into this list. And the next tutor that we're playing is Pattern of Rebirth. Now it is an enchantment and we put it on one of our creatures and when that creature dies, we can search our library for any creature card and put it directly into play. So it's kind of like Rushed Rebirth. We trade one creature for another creature in our deck. Rushed Rebirth lets us target our opponent's creatures. So maybe our opponents have a, a big fatty that dies and we can search our library for one of our own. Pattern of Rebirth, we want to put on our own creature, but being able to at instant speed, basically we put it on our creature and then we can wait and sacrifice a creature whenever we want. To go and tutor up Izoni or Avenger of Zendikar or you know, maybe one of our poison tip archers or blood artist effects is so much utility. We're then playing another spell that I'm really excited about in Plum the Forbidden. It's one on a black for an instant that at it, as an additional cost to play the spell, we have to sacrifice one or more creatures. And when we do, we will copy the spell for each creature sacrificed this way. And we're going to draw a card and lose a life. So this can this one spell can draw us, you know, four or five cards in one turn, which is a super great efficient rate.
And the last card draw spell that we are playing is actually a creature with Ayara, First of Locked Thwain. She's a 3 mana legendary creature, Elf Noble, which whenever she or another black creature enters the battlefield under our control, each opponent is going to lose life and gain a life, so she's also a drainer. All of those pest tokens we're making just so happen to be black too, and the token that a Zoni Thousand Knight makes are also black and green, so they will also trigger Ayara. And then she has an activated ability where we can tap her to sacrifice another black creature to draw a card. And the final category in this deck before we go over the mana base is the removal. We are playing one lonely board wipe with Deadly Tempest, which is going to kill all creatures and each player is going to lose life equal to the number of creatures that they had that died this way. We're playing a Beast Within, which can hit any permanent and that permanent becomes a 3-3 Beast. Mortality Spear, which at four mana is a little inefficient. And if we've gained life this turn, it costs two less to cast. So for a green and a black to destroy any non-land permanent, that's super efficient. Nature's Claim at instant speed and for one mana can blow up any artifact or enchantment. And Kenrith's Transformation is really good at dealing with problematic permanents, turning them into an elk and letting us draw a card. Really good in the deck. And then Calling Ritual is another one of those spells from the standard set that I'm really excited about. For four mana and at sorcery speed, we're going to destroy each non-land permanent with mana value two or less. Notice it doesn't care if it's a token or not. We're going to add a black and a green for each permanent destroyed this way. So being able to clear the board of all of our opponent's mana rocks, you know, maybe they've got Mystic Remoras or, you know, other types of, you know, low costed artifacts and enchantments or even creatures. If they've got a bunch of mana dorks, we can just like sweep all those away and we are going to make so much mana off of this. So super great board wipe in the deck. And so those are all of the non-land spells in the deck. As you can see, we are playing so many ways of making tokens and sacrificing them and draining our opponents i think we're going to be able to trigger dina enough times that that's probably honestly the win con all right that wraps it up for all the non-land spells in the deck let's go over the mana base so we're playing a command tower a jungle hollow which etbs and gives us a life a high market which we can sacrifice a creature to gain a life golgari rot farm which is the bounce land for green and black blighted woodland which we can sacrifice to find lands dark boar pathway Lanoir Wastes, Necro Blossom Snarl, Bajuka Bug to exile our opponent's graveyards, and a Colony Garden. It's kind of a pet card of mine. It ETBs and it makes a token, so I think that's pretty useful. And we are playing 14 Forests and 12 Swamps. And that wraps this episode up. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this week's episode. I hope that you enjoyed playing this deck. I think I'm probably going to build this one. I've been looking for a new green black commander. And I think Dina honestly offers a lot of value. And I think she's a pretty good win con sitting there in the command zone. And just a, another quick reminder, if you are interested in purchasing this deck or any of the cards that you've seen in this deck tech, you can do so by going through the link in the description below. It's our affiliate link with GameGrid, helps the channel out, helps GameGrid out, and it supports the channel and we appreciate it. If you're interested in supporting the channel directly and becoming a patron, you can head on over to patreon.com slash command valley to sign up and get access to exclusive content, early videos, access to our discord, merch, and a bunch of other perks. It's honestly a ton of fun. We have a great time over on our discord. Discord server and I'd like to just give a huge shout out to all of our subscribers and all of our patrons up until this point you guys are awesome and we really couldn't do this without you and now I'd like to hear from you guys were you more excited about Dina or maybe the Witherbloom Elder Dragon personally I was more of a fan of Dina but I'd love to hear from you guys and with that I hope you guys have a wonderful week